So I'm working on this project called Creativity Blue. It's an Expo app that I'm only deploying on web right now. And I saw yesterday that Expo just announced EAS hosting, which was a huge coincidence because I had this Expo app deploying on web. Here comes Expo with their own hosting solution. I was in one of those awkward 15 minute gaps between my next meeting where you really shouldn't start much. You really shouldn't do a whole website migration to a new host. But I was reading about EAS hosting and I mean, the docs for how to do it, it was, I think two CLI commands. It was all you needed. So it looks super simple. I figured I'd go ahead and try it and see how it goes. So I log into the CLI and run my two commands and it worked. I mean, I had my website already deployed on like an internal test URL that Expo created. So this allowed me to verify my deployment worked. It was nice and performant. And it gave me a bunch of confidence in EAS hosting right away. There's like no cost in just like, okay, spin up an internal test URL, right? I'm like 30 seconds in at this point. I figured I'd go ahead and commit to just using Expo for as much as I could and move off of Netlify onto EAS hosting. And this was as easy as just like copying a couple of the DNS records that EAS gave you. And then my production site was hosted on EAS hosting. And that took probably literally less than five minutes for moving my production site onto a new hosting provider. Pretty incredible, right? So if you're watching this, you're probably thinking, should I use EAS hosting? I think if you're using Expo for your web app, I would say, yeah, definitely try it out. I think the, the bigger question that most people probably have to answer first is, do I wanna use React Native and Expo to build my web app in the first place? And it's funny, my friend Nate asked this question on Blue Sky like a month ago, and my answer basically was, you definitely could. I think web support has come a long way in the last year in React Native and Expo. Expo is clearly investing a ton in web support and it's getting really good. And EAS hosting is just another example of that. So my biased opinion is that I do think it is a good bet to make on the future of web and React Native with Expo support. I think if you're a React Native developer that is used to the React Native way of doing things and then you want to build a web app, I would absolutely recommend using Expo for your web app. I think the main kind of hurdle might be from web developers coming to the React Native world, trying to learn how to style views differently and layout views and like which libraries work with React Native and which don't. I think if you're willing to learn the React Native way of doing things and like Expo Router and everything, you realistically can today build a single app that works on web and iOS and Android and is incredibly performant and production quality. And that's super cool. Blue Sky, I think, is the best example of a, a big, important company that's doing this right now. And their app is open source, if you're curious. But anyways, again, I'm biased as a React Native developer, but I do think web on React Native is underrated and it's getting pretty good, I think. Uh, and I think you should try it out. I think EAS hosting is another great tool in the toolbox to help make that easier. Try it out and let me know what you think. And uh, lastly, the project I'm working on called creativity.blue, building on top of Blue Sky. It's an experimental project that I'm still working on. But if you want to be more creative and establish good habits, come check it out. Come make fun little art projects with me and follow me on Blue Sky as I build along with it and make some videos about it in the future. So cheers.